Hello and welcome to the show. Now, we're both fascinated by property. We love the thrill of the chase and also the satisfaction on completion. Yes, it can be a competitive market, but finding those bargains might not be as easy as you think. There's one place you might want to start, your local property auction. In my experience, part of the reason people attend property auctions is for the fear to have it. Ah, yes, the drama. You think you've got that winning bid and then, darn it, somebody comes in and makes a big one. So let's see what inspired the people at the auctions on today's show. It's out with the old and in with the new at this three-bed terrace in Kent. Clearly the work services and everything could do with a bit of a clean. No, actually, he's all going to go in there skip. Lucy's in London at a property with lucrative potential. Yeah, it's a wonderful house. Money, money, money. And I'll be at this two up, two down in Birmingham, but does it have too many problems? You can feel quite a severe slope on this floor. 142. All these properties have been sold at auction, and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid when they went under the hammer. We are sold. This is Gillingham in Kent, a town with a long and proud maritime and shipbuilding history. The dockyards closed back in 1984, but there are new plans for a whole heap of riverfront developments, with a new college already built and plans for new housing, restaurants and bars to boot. Well, just half a mile from that lovely riverfront is the property I'm here to see. And it is a three-bedroom mid-terrace. Guide price 150 to 160,000 quid. So what have we got? Well, straight through the front door and um, it looks to be in mm, average kind of condition. But I quite like the design, a little bit of an entrance area here with the stairs up to your bedrooms. A sort of strange cupboard there, that's got to be good news. I'm already thinking that's going to go and give us more space to whatever is on the other side there. Through into your front sitting room, love the bay window, lots of light flooding in here, even these floorboards. I mean, I know they don't look that good, but, you know, a day with a belt sander on this, hard work, probably get somebody else, else in to do it, but they would come up really nice. I'm not so sure about the woodwork on the walls. <clears throat> yeah, that needs to go, but it's, it's a good sized space and, and practical. You know, you've got this little archway through to the rear sitting room, um, door onto the garden there and then through to the kitchen. Now, ha-ha, I reckon this is the other side of that wall uh, that I saw underneath the stairs there. So straight away, take out that wall, increase the size of this kitchen, because the kitchen is fairly pokey. Uh, <laughs> clearly, the work surfaces and everything could do with a bit of a clean. No, actually, it's all going to go in there, skip. So don't worry about it. But sort the kitchen out, do the double glazing, knock down that wall, and we're starting to get a really nice house developing. <laughs> Upstairs, there are three bedrooms, two very decent-sized doubles. Then there's a small box room the size of a single bedroom. All the bedrooms are in need of redecoration and flooring, and the bathroom, well, that just needs a total overhaul. The property is situated just a stone's throw from the local university, so perhaps this could be a student let. The rooms are big enough, and maybe you could convert one of the downstairs rooms into another bedroom. Food for thought. So, through the back door, and one thing I would certainly want to do is increase the size of that opening, because actually it leads out onto not only a patio, but this really nice sized garden. Bit of a uh, shed at the bottom there as well, so lots of space. Clearly it hasn't been very well designed over time. As you know, brambles, I'm not sure they're really uh, going to be the next thing you're going to see at Hampton Court or the Chelsea Flower Show. Uh, but anyway, get rid of those, sort it out. Maybe even think about some sort of extension on the back here. Some of the neighbours have done that, and you've certainly got a, uh, space to do it. 
it. Um, so options, again, way up what you're going to use the house for, how much is it going to cost, will you recoup your money? Or do you just want to do it because it would be a nice thing to do? You've also got to think about whether it would be cost effective. There's plenty of work to do here without an extension on top. It really depends on what you want to do with it. Family home, student let or HMO, that's a house of multiple occupation. Let's hear what a local estate agent thinks of this property guarded at 150 to 160,000. The pros for the property is it's in a really good location and we're, we're really close to the high street and the, the local amenities, the university and local links to London. Um, the cons here are there are a lot of students, so if a family is looking to move into the property, obviously they've got to take that into consideration that this is a student area. Obviously the house needs a lot of work to, to bring it up to a good standard. The kitchen needs to be refitted. The, Bathroom also needs to have, be refitted, um, maybe new windows, doors, and um, general redecoration throughout the property. With a HMO property, you would have to separate off one of the rooms downstairs, maybe to accommodate an extra bedroom as the third bedroom is smaller. With HMOs, you would have to contact your local council. Councils are responsible for licensing houses of multiple occupation, so that's good advice. Now for valuations. Once the property has been renovated, we would sell this property for the region of £215,000 to £225,000. We would look to rent to a family for £900 to £950 per calendar month. Um, if we're looking for students, it can range between £350 per calendar month per room to £450 per calendar month for each room. Well, there's a lot to like about this property and it certainly has great potential either to be a student let or just a nice family home. And lots of options is what we like. Let's see who agreed when it went under the hammer. Refurbishment projects, three separate bedrooms. Could be good for student letting. 150, 160 is the guide. Where do you want to start me? 150 to start me? 150. Where do you want to start me? Start me at 140 then. 140. Straight in at the back at 140 again. And 145. 145. 145. There's a gentleman just on the left hand side there, 150. Do you want to be 150 sitting down? 150 are standing. 155, it's against you and you. 155, it's with you. And 60 and 165. At 165, sitting. I've spotted you. 165. 167, he's saying, 167, 170, I've got, and two again, 172, and five, and 178, 178, 180, at 178,000 pounds, 180 I'm looking for, for the first time then, if you're all done at 178,000, for the second time, at 178,000 pounds, if you're sure you're all done, it's gonna be sold at 178, standing at the back, make no mistake, Sure, sir, at 178, and your card is T. Bought for £18,000 over the top guide price at £178,000 by Drew. This is local man Drew's first venture into the auction house. I met him at the property to find out his plans. Drew, congratulations. Thank you. Well, how many did you want to buy this place? Um, basically, it's in a good location. I'm not too far away, and I'd been looking at auction properties for a um, a few months, right. and I like the, the one I've bought. It's um, close to universities. It has um, a rental appeal. It also has a selling factor for first-time buyers, in my opinion, and it's close to um, links into London. Right. And it has shops and a park nearby, so it's quite it good all the boxes, yeah. for sure. What are your plans for it? Um, I want to do it up. I want to refurbish it um, in and out, um, redo the bathroom, the kitchen, um, I want to resell it um, on. Uh, oh, okay. Ideally, I'd like to sell it on, but I'm not too sure which way to go about it at the moment. Drew has identified the different possibilities here, but sometimes too many options can be confusing, so it's worth taking the time to weigh it all up. HMOs or House of Multiple Application can actually be quite a good earner. They can, they can deliver quite a good yield. Does that not tempt you? It does, but I've um, been given a... I had an estate, a, a lettings agent come over, and we, he, we worked out a, a, a price where it 
could sell at uh, as a le as a property that could be sold on as an HMO, oh. and it's worked out roughly the same as selling it on as uh, a first time buyer property. Uh, right. What kind of, kind of values have you have you been given? Um, I was given for an HMO is around two twenty two twenty five, um, similar again around, around two twenty four. What houses have been selling for on the road mm. around two fifteen upwards, so two twenty ish. Um, they've been going going for around that. And what sort of rent could you get as an HMO? Do you think? Um, about three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty pounds per room. So depending on again number of rooms and the size of it and the facilities you're providing, um, such as en suites um, and, and maybe not even having en suite, depending on what you've got in the space. So it's going to come to a crunch point fairly soon. Otherwise, you can't start the work, isn't it? Yeah, very soon. Um, I want to. Um, my ideal preparation. Um, um, is to keep it as a home right. uh, for a first-time buyer. Um, I just want a couple more opinions before I make up my final decision on what I end up doing with the property. It's all up to you. Drew hopes he's going to get the property done in six months. And while I'm all in favour of doing your homework, I'm beginning to worry he's starting to give himself too many options and he'll spend that time scale just thinking about it. I'm not sure whether I want to get an extension out the back uh, onto this because I've got a bit of a space in the garden. Oh, OK. Um, or get a conservatory and see how much extra that costs um, and what added value it uh, puts onto the house. Um, the roof is quite spacious uh, in the loft, but I'm not sure how much value that would add to the house if I converted it. Right, OK. So what's the budget? Between 20 to 25, I want to say. Okay. Um, it needs a bit of skimming, so it might be, need a, more labour work than I would like. But, uh, yeah. Basically. And are you going to be hands on with this? Are you going to actually do any of the work or.? I've not done anything before, <laughs> but um, I want to try. Um, I'll, I'll pick up bits and pieces, mm -hmm. um, I think, and try and do, do bits where I can. Um, for me, it's just a learning, learning curve uh, as more as anything else as, um, and getting into it. So it would be nice to try and do as much as I can, but at the same time, I'm definitely going to need trades uh, people uh, to come in and, and do, do a lot of work as well. So. Um, a little bit of help from me and more from the trade men. <laughs> good. Well, listen, congratulations and Thank good luck with much. it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Cheers. Well, you do need to begin with the end in mind, as the famous expression goes, and that's certainly what Drew is doing. Before he does anything, he has to decide what he's going to do with this place. But if he is planning on selling, then I think going down the route of turning it into a home is probably the right one. How will he get on? You can find out later in the show. But first, let's head back to the Kent town of Gillingham, where earlier in the show, I visited this three-bed mid-terrace, guided at 150 to 160,000 pounds. There was nothing in here that a good refurb couldn't fix, but you know me, I always want to knock things down, well, not all the time, but sometimes. I reckon this is the other side of that wall uh, that I saw underneath the stairs there, so straight away, take out that wall, increase the size of this kitchen, because the kitchen is fairly pokey. Well, a bit of demolition could improve the kitchen, yes, and outside I felt there might be scope to build things up. Maybe even think about some sort of extension on the back here. Some of the neighbours have done that, and you've certainly got a, uh, space to do it. Situated in a popular neighbourhood, the house exceeded its guide price by almost 20 grand, being bought by Drew for 178,000. This was his first auction purchase, and although he didn't have any renovation experience, he was ready to roll his sleeves up and learn on the job. I've not done anything before, <laughs> but um, I want to try. Um, I'll, I'll pick up bits and pieces, mm -hmm. um, I think, and try and do, do bits where I can. Drew planned to resell this property, but he was undecided whether to keep it as a family home or to convert it into an HMO. It's going to come to a crunch point fairly soon, otherwise you can't start the work, isn't it? Yeah, I just want a couple more opinions before I make up my final decision on what I end up doing with the property. Setting himself a time scale of six months and a budget of £25,000, Drew made his first leap into the world of property development. 
Family Home or HMO, we're back ten months later to find out. It looks like Drew has settled on a family home, and although this is his first renovation, I'm impressed with the results. A few walls have come down, the divider between the front and back room has been removed, creating a much more open-plan feel, and the entrance to the kitchen has also been enlarged. But in a really smart move, he's converted that strange little cupboard under the stairs into a shower room. Upstairs, the family bathroom has been completely gutted and modernised, and the bedrooms have been freshly decorated and carpeted. Throughout the house, new UPVC double glazing has been installed, and Drew's plasterer has been kept busy. Every wall and ceiling has been skimmed. Clean and tidy inside, and so too on the outside. The back garden has been cleaned out, re-turfed and decked, a perfect outdoor space. So, what made him decide on a family home? Having spoken to the neighbours and getting a feel of the actual area that we were in, it felt like you could move a family into here and it would be a nice area, seeing as though there's lots of amenities. It is also in a student area, but at the same time, we're away from it. It doesn't affect us, we don't hear much, and it is a very quiet area. Drew left the interior work to his team of builders and their subcontractors, but he kept himself occupied outdoors. I did the garden pretty much all by myself. Um, I had a little bit of help with the shed putting the roof on uh, with my brother and my father. Apart from that, most of the work was done by the team of builders I had, who were really great. Almost everything on the project ran smoothly, but there was a problem getting things to run smoothly in the smallest room in the house. They had to rejig the piping so all the uh, wastage pipe was flowing downwards and not level. So it was a last minute hiccup, but apart from that, we didn't have any major problems at all. Due to family and work commitments, the time scale slipped from six to nine months. But did Drew manage to keep his budget in check? We ended up spending around 35,000, purely because I didn't realize how much extra work was involved. And I think the, the finishing that I've gone for, the workmanship, I, I believe I just spent a little bit more just to get it to that standard. He's happy with the end results, and he's picked up a lot of knowledge in the process. It was good to see what went into a house, when you stripped the house back, what, it, what was actually there, and then how it was actually put back together and what, what we can actually achieve once you do all of it. But it's something that I'll never forget now and I can take it into another project if I ever want to do one again. It's been a steep learning curve, but will Drew's total spend of 213,000 pay dividends? For the answer to that, we're turning to two local property experts. What do they make of Drew's first attempt at property renovation? I think it's a lovely property. I think it's got lots of potential for a new buyer. Um, there's plenty of people looking in this area. Um, we've sold properties up and down these streets recently, and we know we'd be confident in finding someone that would love this property as much as I do. The selling points of the property, I believe, are the fact that it's a virtually new house, but it has the structure and the build of an old house, so therefore it's like combining the best of both worlds. Will those favourable impressions translate into positive valuations? In my opinion, I believe this property could be marketed to £240,000. I think this property would sell for a price in the region of £240,000. A sale at £240,000 would mean a pre-tax profit of £27,000. That's not a bad valuation. Uh, I think it was around what I was looking for. And if Drew changed his mind and put the house on the rental market? I believe that this property could achieve between £900 and £1,000 per calendar month. I think this property will rent for a price in the region of £950 per calendar month. Those rental valuations mean a return on investment of between 5 and 5.6%. 5 that too is also quite a good uh, valuation as well. I'm very pleased. For now, Drew's continuing with his day job in recruitment, but has that first taste of property development made him hungry for more? 
this property will go on the market. So uh, once it is sold, um, or even before that, I will start looking again. Um, I will hope to go to an auction in the next month or so and literally just do it all over again.